Now back to the dusty vaults of the BBC library. We've just seen a typical Harmon and Ising cartoon from the very early days of Hollywood. It was very lush, wasn't it, and skillfully animated, but as far as MGM was concerned, they weren't making enough money. So the company hired the famous producer Fred Quimby. <laughs> That's a funny name. And they told him to go off and make them some big bucks. The problem was, Fred had no experience of animation, and people say he had absolutely no sense of humour either. The first thing he did was to sack Harmon and Ising and set up a major new cartoon series, The Captain and the Kids. And what happened to it? It was a complete disaster. <laughs> but in fact, Fred had hired some of the country's finest animators. And looking back on those cartoons, they may not have been very popular then, but they look really good now. MGM only ever made 16 of them, and only two were in colour. Fortunately, we've got them both. Green, the elf should be up on the roof. Stick him up, Sandy Claus. Hands up, Sandy Claus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show them kids a real Sandy Claus. And now I'll have the rope. I've just shown you a bit of one. Here's the other. It's called Petunia Natural Park. At the gateway, we stop for inspection. These rugged, handsome rangers are here to help and guide you. There will be a... $10 for the Their motto is servant. As we drive a few miles eastward, that's right, eastward, we approach the giant redwood, towering above us like a great cathedral. Driving through this tree demonstrates the immense size of these giants. Whoa! I think perhaps we took the wrong detour. Let us leave our tourists for a few moments and take a hop over to the geysers. Well, some hop. These geysers have been brought here from all parts of the world at a great expense. But the granddaddy of them all is all dependable who never misses. Uh oh, there she blows now. I think it probably flopped because it didn't have a Bugs Bunny or Donald Duck in it. No wacky hero that everyone could identify with. But whatever the reason, poor old Fred Quimby had a big problem. Where was he going to get a hit series from? Well, there was a famous artist who did comic strips for the newspapers, and he was called Milk Gross. And he got these two funny characters, Count Screwloose and J.R. the Wonder Dog. Fred had an inspiration. <laughs> Turn the comic strip into a cartoon series. It won't work, said the artists. The figures are too complicated. They won't animate properly. But Fred said, this is going to be a smash hit. So the cartoonists beavered away. And what do you know? Fred was right. It was the funniest cartoon they'd ever made. They were really proud of it. Then Fred saw it. Poor old grumpy, humourless Fred. Not only did he not find it amusing, he didn't even want to distribute it. It's below the dignity of a film MGM would want to have, he said. <laughs> and so, only two Count Screwloose cartoons were ever made. Have a look at one of them. Do you think it's too undignified for MGM? Get in line, you gators. Come on, you rugbutters. There's the $10,000 prize for the winner of this big contest. Citizens Committee on Fair Play. This contest is on the level. Ain't it? Why, why sure. Uh, of course, of course. Why, what makes you think it isn't? Why, this is an honest contest, boys. Why, why we're on the up and up, absolutely. Boys, we're 100% square. Yeah, yes, sure, we're on the level. Sure, it's on the level. Nobody's skipping. Are they? Well then, on with the contest! Ladies and gentlemen, the first entry in the $10,000 swing contest <laughs> is 
Come on. 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 saying that lovely little songstress, Madam Lizzie Sawish. of his brawny arms. Played Alexander's ragtime band. His comrade been to lift him. treat for six-year-old Hedda Archbold. Her mum and dad saw a cartoon on BBC Two in the early 70s called La Linea. Is there any chance of seeing it again? There certainly is, Hedda. all the long lost tunes we've got time for this series but do keep writing in with your requests won't you please the address is stay tuned bbc television center house 56 wood lane london w12 7 rj that's stay tuned bbc television center house 56 wood lane london w12 7 rj stay tuned <laughs>
goodbye New York for the Elliott sisters. Here at home, an awful lot's happened in just six weeks. I come to ask you what the devil you think you're playing at. Yes? <laughs> Who on earth are you? We obviously have a lot of catching up to do. Back in business, The House of Elliot, Sunday at 7.30 on BBC One. <laughs> Having a ghost in the house can be a real boon with the laundry. Thanks, Mrs. Feldman. That was the iron. She can give helpful advice on bringing up the children. Got to leave them to their own devices. And pray the devices work. So for real spiritual well-being... Eat more, your thing will get bigger. So haunt me, Sunday at 8.25 on BBC One. BBC Two is just starting on a late breakfast. That's Tiffany's in the romantic comedy starring Audrey Hepburn and George Peppard. Yo, ho, ho. Very odd one. Oh, oh, hello. Now, if you were expecting the broom cupboard, then a surprise! Welcome to our loony base here on Children's BBC, where everyone's a loony. This is where we've been coming from every morning at ten past seven on our holiday mornings on Children's BBC. Do join us tomorrow morning. We've got plenty more entertainment for you today, though, this afternoon on Children's BBC. Look at this for a lineup. In a few moments, it's Opus and Bill, cartoon action like you've never seen before. The really wild shows after that, featuring some... Then it's the movie game building snowmen there. Oh, that looks good. Don't burn your hands. Then news round, review of the year is after that with Take That. Yes, and some very cute creatures as well, including Robbie and Mark, who wrote this script. I did believe it. Now it's time for some splendid cartoon action from Opus and Bill. 